Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss about the uh, SSL decryption, right, on Palo Alto firewalls. So we are going to understand how actually your DPCPU is going to do the processing when you enable the SSL decryption on the Palo Alto firewalls, right? So here we have this particular firewall. We will be initiating traffic from here, right? This traffic go will be going over the internet, and here we are doing the SSL decryption. So we will take the debugs and we will see. what actually happens at uh, cpu level you know what are the different uh, uh, processing stages where your packets get processed you know and uh, what are all the processes which uh, takes place during the processing and it is purely related to the life of a packet which i have already explained in my previous lecture if you have already seen that video then you will be able to und understand this particular uh, you know uh, entire flow that what i'm trying to say here and another main thing is uh, first we need to understand the basic difference between the proxy and the next generation firewalls right so when we talk about proxy let's say this is your lan environment and we have a proxy in place and then you are connected to internet so if this pc would like to access facebook.com my request is going to the proxy first and from proxy it is getting towards the facebook so what is happening here we are maintaining two different connections one connection is between this client and proxy and then proxy is making the connection on behalf of this client with facebook this is the main difference between the proxy solution and the next generation firewall when we talk about next generation firewalls in forward proxy we are not making two separate connections right so what happens when you place palo alto firewall instead of proxy you are not going to maintain two separate connections you will be having only one connection but what we are going to do is we are going to maintain two different session keys to decrypt packets coming from the client and packets you know coming from the server so let's understand this particular flow what i'm trying to say here is right so what happens this is your client this is your server and in the middle we have the palo alto firewall so your client is sending tcp send firewall will intercept this send it will do the uh, ingress stage processing then packet will then we will check the flow lookup there is no session allocated it will go inside the slow path there we will check the uh, you know basic sanity checks your zone protection is there you know app id cache is there uh, so many things are there we will evaluate the uh, nad policy we will check the you know we will do the forwarding lookup we will check the security policy and after doing all the checks we will create the session install the session and then it will go inside fast path right so after doing the processing this sin will be forwarded to the destination server then your sinac will come from the server and this acknowledged sinac will be forwarded back to the client then your acknowledgement packet will come and this will be forwarded to the destination server by this time we have completed the tcp three way handshake now what will happen after tcp three way handshake the client is going to send client hello packet now this client hello is part of the ssl handshake and uh, i have already uploaded the ssl handshake video you can just go through that video it will give you deep understanding about the ssl handshake how it works so inside this client hello we have multiple uh, things we have cipher suite then we have multiple extensions server name indication extension is there which contains the uh, destination domain uh, details we have renegotiation information we have elipt elliptive curve points which we use for uh, you know for generating the uh, shared secret values right so this client hello will be intercepted by the firewall and now firewall will send this data inside the app id reason being that in tcp three way handshake there is no data data payload is zero right so when we say when we send send sinac acknowledgement 
these packets doesn't contain any data so they you know uh, when they intercepted by the firewall firewall cannot do deep inspection on them because they don't have layer 7 data in it right but when this client hello is intercepted by the firewall firewall is capable to do uh, app identification now is capable to analyze this layer 7 information because the ssl information is your layer 7 information right so now this client hello will be intercepted by the Palo Alto firewall. First, ingress stage processing will be done. Then we will identify this flow. Uh, you know, we will do, do the flow lookup. We will be able to identify the session. Then we will go inside the fast path. Inside the fast path, we will check whether the application has been identified or not. If not, we will go inside the app ID, right? And inside app ID, we will come to know that this application is SSL, right? Then we will see whether you have configured any decryption policy for this. If you have the decryption policy, then your proxy engine will kick in, right? So in Palo Alto Firewall, we have FPTCP segments. These are your forward proxy TCP segments. Why do we need that? Have you ever seen that SSL decryption in Palo Alto Firewall is much better than any other vendor? The reason being that in Palo Alto Firewall, when we talk about proxy engine, it only processes SSL information. And what PanOS does, so let's say this is your Ethernet frame. It is having layer two information, layer three information, layer four information, and this SSL information. What PanOS is going to do, PanOS is going to strip off this particular SSL information, and it is going to store it inside the FPTCP segments. Now these segments are nothing but your software buffers, right? So one FPT, FPTCP segment requires two software buffers to store the information inside your RAM and one hardware buffer. So this is the ratio, two is to one. Now when your proxy engine will kick in, it will only analyze this particular SSL information, right? So during the app id uh, processing when we will be able to identify that we do have the decryption policy for this we will flag the session for proxy we will make the session as uh, you know that we will flag the session for proxy proxy engine will kick in right panos will strip off this ssl information will place it inside the fptcp segments your proxy engine will go to these fptcp segments and start processing this SSL information. So whatever cipher shoot you are sending, whatever uh, extension fields you are sending, the firewall will keep keep a note of it, right? And then your firewall will forward this particular client hello towards the server. Now from server, you will be getting server hello. Certificate chain server certificate chain and you will be getting server hello done okay now this message will come inside the fragments because uh, it is approximately around 5000 kb information and we have a limit over internet we cannot send more than 1500 uh, you know bytes so it will come around uh, in 3 4 packets right this information will be intercepted by the palo alto firewall now what palo alto firewall will do so let's say your certificate chain was like this star.facebook.com was the end entity certificate signed by intermediate digicert authority and this was signed by digicert root ca so this was the certificate chain you are, you are going to receive from the Facebook. Firewall has intercepted this thing. Now, when you do decryption, you need, you need to generate the uh, you know, certificate chain on firewall as well. You need to define the root certificate. You need to create the intermediate CA, which can uh, sign this particular end certificate later on. Because the ultimate goal is we need to generate two session keys, one between the client and the firewall another one between firewall and the server so that we can decrypt the packets. So we will see how that particular key will be generated. So now what will happen when this packet will be intercepted by the firewall, what firewall is going to do, 
firewall is going to modify this particular certificate chain and we call it on the fly certificate pinning right so on the fly certificate pinning means we are going to modify this particular chain and now this server hello will be forwarded to the client then you have server certificate then you have server hello done message right so the, here this server certificate will be like this let's say you have generated this root ca then you have any intermediate ca let's say you have generated this intermediate ca and then this will be your end certificate so what will happen here you must be having public key of the facebook which came inside the certificate of the facebook right firewall has taken note of that particular public key and when firewall is signing these uh, you know this particular certificate by using this certificate and this has been signed by this particular certificate it has its own public key right so here your public key will be different now when this packet will be received by the client what client will do client will generate the pre master key right so i would recommend you should go through my ssl uh, handshake video so that you can understand this handshake because we are going to understand the decryption here so now firewall is going to i mean client is going to generate your pre master key let's say the value of that pre master key is 5 so what client will do client will first validate the certificate chain right this root ca should be part of the trusted root authority inside the user store of the uh, machine if it is not part of that particular user store then client will not trust this particular certificate chain and your browser will give you the warning that your connection is not secure to this particular website okay then uh, we do have a revocation list check so we use online certificate status protocol we use a uh, you know certificate uh, revocation list protocol to check whether this particular certificate is part of the revocation list or not right so these are the verifications which we perform to verify that the certificate you are receiving is correct right so after doing the verification meanwhile we generate this pre master key and inside the client hello we must have shared the random value if you take the wireshark capture you will be able to see all these things so now what client does with the help of this public key client is going to encrypt this pre master key so your pre master key will be encrypted with the help of this public key and will be transmitted over and we say this packet client key exchange right now this client key exchange message will be intercepted by the firewall now firewall is having the private key as well because firewall has done the signing of this certificate so firewall is having the uh, private key but firewall will do firewall will decrypt this packet and take out the pre master key which is 5 right and now what firewall will do firewall will calculate another pre master key let's say value of that particular pre master key i will use another color for this value of that pre master key is 10 and it will encrypt this particular value with the help of this public key which you know actually received from which firewall has received from the facebook it will encrypt this pre master key and it will send it towards the server client key exchange now your facebook server will decrypt this packet with the help of the private key it is having and it will take out the pre master key to be as 10 so here you have pre master 10 here you have pre master 10 between firewall and server and here you have pre master as 5 and 5 between client and server right and this is the ultimate goal because we need to generate two different session keys one between client and server uh, client and firewall and another one between firewall and server so now what will happen we will perform the mathematical computations on all the machines and we will generate the master key how master key gets generated with the help of the pre master as well as your random value so let's say your master key is coming out to be 
15 here with the help of the five and any random value. And that master key will be same here as well, right? That will be 15 here. Similarly, for firewall to server, pre-master is 10 and let's say the master key is coming out to be 20. And here, master key will come out to 20, right? And then we will generate the session key with the help of the master key. And let the, let's say the final session key, which we will use for encrypt and decryption of the packet is coming out to be 25 here. It will be 25 here, but it will be a different value. Let's say 35 between firewall and server, right? So by doing this, now we have two different session keys. So 2525 between client and firewall, 3535 between firewall and server. So what will happen after SSL handshake? If client needs to send any data towards the server, let's say I will send the HTTP get packet, right? So that get packet will be this HTTP get will be encrypted by using this session key 25. When it will be intercepted by the firewall, firewall will decrypt this packet with the help of the 25 key because it has it has the 25 key, right? It will decrypt the packet. It will take out the content. It will start doing the deep inspection on this. And after doing the de uh, deep inspection, before sending it to the server, what it will do, it will re-encrypt this packet, but now it will re-encrypt this packet with the help of the new session key that is 35. Because server is also having 35, right? It is not having 25 to decrypt the packet. So that is the whole purpose right of generating two different session keys so that firewall can do the deep inspection and can do the decryption of the SSL traffic, right? Then this packet will be received by the server. Now server will uh, decrypt this packet with the help of this session key and it will take out the original uh, request that is HTTP get. It will prepare the response and it will send the response by encrypting it with the help of the session key that is 35. Okay, now firewall will intercept this, decrypt it, will do the deep inspection, re-encrypt it and forward it towards the client. But re-encryption will be done with a different session key and that would be 25. Now client is having the 25 session key, it will decrypt this packet, take out the response and this is how your communication is going to happen between client and server and firewall will behave like a man in the middle same connection is being used, right? Although in theory or in interviews, you will be uh, asked this particular question that what is the difference between uh, next generation firewalls and proxies, right? So in proxy in actual, we maintain two different connections, right? One is between the client and the proxy. Another one proxy makes on the behalf of client with the server. But in firewall, this is not the reality. We use the same connection. We just do this modification, right? And uh, let's verify this particular thing. So I've already run the uh, debugs, right? So after aggregating the debugs, we get this particular file. Right, and you can see, this is the actual processing which has occurred inside your uh, DP CPU, right? So uh, after taking out the log file, this is how it looks like, right? So this is the final log file between your client and the server and firewall is behaving like men in the middle. So I have taken out the stream. I mean, you need to take out one TCP stream out of it so that you can do the analysis. So to identify the stream, what you need to do is because this is all in CLI and it is not that easy to take out the stream from here. So what you need to do, just do control F and search for acknowledgement number zero because we know that in SYN packet, ACK is always zero. So if you do find next, you will be able to ident identify the first packet, right? And this is the sequence num number of that particular first packet. As we know that sequence number is always initial random number, right? And you can see flag is sent. So packet received at ingress stage, right? We got to know. This is the packet here, no active flow found, 
and queue to create session right so it means we are going to create the session similarly you will see another packet has arrived uh, so this is the reason we need to you know take help of the sequence number to take out the uh, stream uh, let me just do the search again yeah so here if you if i will scroll up little bit you can see one packet has been received here and after few seconds i have received another packet right and it is also having ack0 but a serial number is different so you know whenever you make connection with any particular website you just don't establish one tcp connection you establish multiple tcp connections with that particular website and that is the reason you know we need to take out one particular tcp stream to do our analysis so i'm using this technique right to identify that particular stream only because when you analyze packet captures inside wireshark and you click follow tcp stream it does this automatically for you but when you have when we have dumps like this you know you don't have any tool which can uh, you know stream the uh, i mean stream the entire tcp stream for you you need to filter out, filter out it on your own so i can see the slow path processing packet is here i mean pro entire processing is here for this particular packet and then this has been uh, you know uh, another slow path i can see so what i have done uh, what i have done i have already filtered out my uh, logs and this is the final file right so here you can see that this this is the tcp sin processing packet initially has been received at ingress stage right and if you have seen my palo alto uh, packet processing video there you will be able to correlate what i was referring in that particular video so ingress stage then uh, if there is no flow is there then we go inside the slow path we do initial checks and we create the session and here you can see that we have allocated the session and this is the session id right and after this we go inside the fast path you can see fast path processing here and then after doing the fast path we just transmit the packet out so you can see we have transmitted the packet so this is the ram uh, buffer location where your packet has been stored right and this packet has been transmitted out after that we have received synac so again synac will be received in ingress stage and now by this time we have the flow you can see we have found the flow so it will not go inside the uh, slow path it will directly come inside the fast path right and uh, here you can see that uh, data length is always zero so sin synac acknowledgement these packet doesn't carry data so that is the reason in fast path you are not able to see much processing here right you cannot see a uh, layer 7 deep inspection or something like that happening here no app id identification is happening something like that right and after doing the processing we have forwarded this packet as well then you have received acknowledgement and we have done the acknowledgement processing as well in the similar way now the actual processing starts and that is your client hello so we have received this client hello you can see the ip address this is my laptop from where i have generated the traffic and this is the cisco.com where it is going you can see flags acknowledgement and push right and uh, now you can see we have the uh, flow then it went inside the fast path processing now inside fast path you will see the deep processing pan app id process lookup right we will try to identify the app and your app will be identified as ssl and then we are going to update the cache which is there inside this slow path right so that another uh, connection if any another connection is coming for this particular destination ip on this particular destination port and with this particular protocol number it will be considered as ssl application right so this is how your app id cache works then we have the decryption policy so you can see your proxy engine will kick in right because uh, we we were inside the app id and inside app id uh, you know we came to know that this particular uh, traffic is uh, subjected to process by the ssl right uh, i mean we have the decryption policy in place and we need to configure i mean do the decryption we need to invoke the proxy engine right so first we will 
buffer the cipher shoot whatever uh, ciphers uh, you know we have received so we are going to add the cipher ids in these memory locations or on these particular indexes right and after that you will see that our proxy engine has been kicked in right you can see that here proxy engine has been kicked in and you can see we are parsing the client hello packet right and uh, server name from tls sni extension field and the server name is cisco.com the url is cisco.com pan proce processing session and this is the session id which we are uh, processing this is the proxy engine which is doing the processing here you can see the category of the uh, url computer and network information then you can see this session is in forward proxy right ssl policy we have action 2 and then you can see uh, we have started processing the ciphers you know we are taking note of everything and uh, check client hello verify and then you will see that firewall doesn't support tls 1.3 right so firewall will do all these analysis of the client hello and uh, start inline proxy in the middle of a session allocate ssLHS right these are the uh, you know buffer locations where we are allocating the information we are storing the information which will be required later on then proxy ssl 15 do not need ctd content thread detection module is not required at this point of time right and then uh, this is the uh, work id or you can say wqe work queue entry right here you will interestingly notice that this is the source port 50696 and destination port is 443 but when this client hello will be forwarded from the firewall towards the server this source port will change right so source port will be changed so i'll i'll show you that in the debugs only then you can see uh, we have invoked the fp tcp segments for forward proxy tcp segments to analyze the data received record 22 length 155 decoded record length this receive handshake client hello length this and then we will start processing your uh, you know client hello and this is the buffer location in the memory inside the ram where this particular ssl uh, information have has been stored for the proxy processing and then uh, similarly if you go down you will see that uh, more processing has been done by the uh, uh, proxy engine and at last you will see that after processing this client hello this session will be marked inside proxy that this session is in proxy there is no error in doing the processing of client hello after that it will come inside forwarding stage and then your packet will be forwarded and here if you see the port number now see the port number port number has been changed so initially it was 50000 something this time it is 61000 destination port will remain same but your uh, original source port will change when firewall is sending the packet. So you can see here, you know, so firewall has changed the source port number. And uh, then you can see this is the uh, actual memory location where your packet has been stored, right? And then your server hello, server certificate and uh, server hello done message will come from the server. And you can see the similar sort of processing right it will start processing this is the packet you have received and this is the memory location where we are storing the packet and uh, you can see that these are the certificate information which is stored cisco.com san jose california's you know company i mean the country right so these are the information which is stored inside the ram and this is the machine uh, format hexadecimal value where we have stored this particular information and how this is look like I mean, uh, in your web browser, when you open up your any website, so you, if you click on the lock, you will be able to see the certificate, right? So that is the entire information which is stored here. 